Hello everyone and welcome to our YouTube video and today we are going to tackle about eco literacy in developing a sustainable environment and we're going also to discuss the seven environmental principles of nature and of course and how to have a green school so first we are going to tackle about eco literacy Eco-literacy Eco-literacy or ecological literacy is the ability to understand the natural systems that make a life on earth possible. Eco-literacy is the power that comes from understanding and awareness of how nature's living systems works. Eco-literacy, or the term eco-literacy, was first published 24 years ago by Capra in 1997, who founded the Center of Eco-literacy. It is a non-profit organization dedicated to education for sustainable living. Together with others, they have advanced eco-literacy with focus or with the focus in the creation of sustainable human communities and society. Eco-literate person An eco-literate person is prepared to be an effective member of society with well-rounded abilities of head, heart, hand, and spirit. To be eco-literate means understanding the principles of organization of ecological communities, constructive collaborations between members of the community and using these principles of creating sustainable human communities. An ecologically or an ecologically literate society be a sustainable society which do not destroy the natural environment in which they depend. Sustainable environment or sustainable development is that the idea of human society must live and meet their needs without compromising the ability of future generations or future generations to meet their own needs to meet their own needs the official definition of sustainable development was developed for the first in the bronze land reported in 1987. Specifically, sustainable development is a way of organizing society so that it can exist in the long term. This means that taking into an account both the imperatives proceed, proceed and those of the future, such as preservation of the environment in natural resources or social economic equity. Okay, so to continue with our discussion about the eco-literacy, here are some five ways to develop eco-literacy. According to Danielle Goldman, Lisa Binet, 
Zenobia bylaw, there are five ways or there are five ways to develop eco literacy. This is for us to teach children to take care or deeply about environment. First is to develop empathy for all forms of life. From a view of human as distinct and superior to a more real view of people as part of the natural world by understanding the common needs we have with other organisms. From that, we may broaden our circles of empathy to include other living forms' quality of life and real care. Teachers may help students develop this capacity. Like caring by teaching them about the critical functions that plants and animals play in maintaining the web of life. Empathy may also be cultivated through direct contact with other living things, such as maintaining live plants and animals in the classroom. Condut conducting field trips to natural areas like zoos, botanical gardens, animal rescues facilities. Second, embrace sustainability as a community practice. By learning the wondrous ways that plants and animals and their living things are independent or interdependent, students are inspired to consider the rule of interconnectedness within their communities and see the value in strengthening those relationships by thinking and acting cooperatively. Third, make the visible or make the invincible visible. The road between a decision and its consequences used to be quick and visible and it's still for certain societies today. For example, if a homesteading family family clears this property of trees they may soon facing or they will be soon facing flooding or flash flooding soil erosion and significant reduction in biodiversity if we want to build more life affirming affirming ways of living we must find ways to make visible the things that seem invisible to make visible. Educators may assist through a variety of methods. They may use incredible base tools like Google Earth App. This is to allow the students to virtually go to the various areas and nations and observe the environment. Teachers may be able to organize field tours to see location that has been silently degraded as part of the system that supplies energy. Fourth, anticipate unintended consequences. Unintended consequences of human actions are responsible for, for the many of the current environmental issues. A handful of northward techniques for predicting unforeseen consequences can be taught to students by educators. When an activity threatens to have a harmful influence on the environment or human health, precautionary measures should be implemented, implemented regardless of whether a cause and effect link has been scientifically proven. Last but not the least, fifth, understand how nature sustains life. Eco-literate people understand that nature is the source of life. As a result, they have, they have turned to nature as their teacher and acquired numerous key principles.
Eco-literate people have learned from nature that all living are part of complex, linked web of life, and that individual who live in each location rely on their interconnectedness of existence. Teachers may help students comprehend the complex web of interactions that exist inside the locations by having them it as a system. Second, eco-literate individuals are more aware of the existence of systems of various scales. Finally, eco-literate people practice a style of life that meets the demands of the current generations while also preserving nature's intrinsic potential to sustain life in the future. Remember that this necessitates students learning to consider the big picture while making life decisions. To help us educators foster socially and emotionally engaged eco-literacy, we have identified the following five practices. These are, of course, not the only ways to do so, but we believe that educators who will cultivate these practices. It offers a strong foundation for becoming eco-literate, helping themselves and their students build healthier relationships with other people and the planet.